In this video, we have a quadratic function, f of x equals 6x minus x squared plus 7. And it looks like it says, use the graphing tool to graph the equation. Use the vertex and one of the intercepts to draw the graph. So in this case, the quadratic function is not written in standard form. So what we'll do is we'll use our formula for the vertex. The formula for the vertex is parentheses negative b over 2a comma f of negative b over 2a. So step one in using this formula is you just figure out what this number is. So here a is equal to six, uh, is equal to negative one. Whoops, I got confused. See, because you can easily write it like this. Be careful. Right, so a is negative one. B is equal to six. And c is seven, but we don't really need it. Okay, so now we can write down x x is negative b over 2a, so b is 6, so it's negative 6 over 2, and a is negative 1. So that's uh, negative and negative is positive, so you get 6 over 2 equals 3. So you get x equals 3. This is actually called the axis of symmetry. This cuts the parabola in half, okay? So we already have the axis in case it asks us for that. So this number here that's circled is 3. So now we just need f of 3, right? Because we found this, we know it's 3, 3. And then so now we need f of 3. So we take this number and we plug it in to our function. So f of 3 is 6 times 3 minus 3 squared plus 7. 6 times 3 is 18. 3 squared is 9. We have plus 7. 18 minus 9 is 9. So 9 plus 7 is 16. So now we have our vertex. It's 3 comma 16, right? Because we have f of 3 equals 16. So x is 3 and y is 16. You can also think about it. We just worked out this number here, right? This number is 16. That's the y coordinate and the x-coordinate is here, it's the three. Okay, we also need an intercept. The easiest intercept to find is the y-intercept. So to find that, we can just plug in zero. When we do that, we get six times zero minus zero squared plus seven. So we just get seven, because all of these are zeros. So our y-intercept is zero comma seven. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish the problem. So I'm gonna click here where it says click to enlarge graph. Then it says, choose a tool in the palette and follow the instructions. So the graph we want is this one here. So I'm gonna left click on that. And then it says, click the graph to plot the vertex of your parabola. You'll notice as I move my mouse on this little graph, the numbers in the top right corner up here, they change. That's the point we're at. So we want to be um, at 316. So that's gonna be way up here. So there it is. Looks like it's okay, 316, so I'm gonna left click. Now we want the y-intercept, so 0, 7, that's gonna be right there. 0, 7, looks okay. Notice this parabola opens down, right, because we have a negative in front of the x squared. Click save, check answer, and nice work. It says press continue to see more. Ooh, the suspense. <laughs> the axis of symmetry is, so that's this one here, we found it before x equals 3. It wants an equation. It even reminds you. Very important to type the equation. So x equals 3. Well done. The domain of the function. For these problems, the domain is always all real numbers. The domain is the set of inputs. So if I pick an x here, do I get a y value? Yes, I do. It's off the screen, though. So I can pick any x, and I always get a y value. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. So negative infinity. It's all the x's that you can plug in that give you y values, that's what the domain is. Fantastic. The range, we go from the bottom up. So this graph goes down forever, okay? Even though there's no arrow here, it does go down forever. So it's negative infinity all the way to 16. It's all the possible y values. You know, always go from the bottom up, okay? So negative infinity all the way to 16. So it'd be parentheses, negative infinity all the way to 16, and then bracket. Let's try that. And that's it.